Okay, guys, get your bug ready. We're about to get into the Path of Exile review. It's about to go down, boys. After 100 hours, this honest review. Um, this should be epic. The DM review of PoE. I want to see, you know, what does a person who went from Diablo Immortal to D4 to PoE think about the game at, like, overall? Okay, I've been playing Path of Exile now. I've got about 120 hours into my character, and it is time for us to do our final review, impressions, whatever you want to call it. Looking back at Path of Exile, what I've learned and what I think about the game. Okay. I have done several of their fights as Turi, I'm sure I'm pronouncing it wrong, Syrianarch, and Man. either of the worlds I've defeated. The Shaper got the better of me, but I'm still trying to learn that fight. My character as it stands is a level 91 character. I heard it really starts getting slow right around 95 and not everyone all the way goes to 100 every single time anyway. The build I ended up going with is a Juggernaut Marauder, which basically Based. just boils down to me taking everything that gives me life, everything that gives me tank, everything that regenerates my life, elemental resistances, really anything tanky at all. My plan was really very simple. I took Shield Crush because I thought it sounded like a cool move because I like shields, and I took anything that makes me tankier. My whole plan was thematically, I was thinking, I'm just going to be a really tanky guy with a shield. And that was about as far as my logic went, and I learned piece by piece. Base, dude. 2800 HP, dude. Tanky as fuck, dude. This tanky as fuck. Now, to be fair, dude, with the brass dome and shit, with armor stacking, I mean, shit. Pieces I went. This has had uh, good things, but also repercussions that have come from the fact that I decided to do my build like I can. For instance, I do absolutely zero damage to speak of. That's why anytime I kill a boss, it takes the better part of my evening. But on the bright side, what? I am fairly safe. But there's another way you can be safe. And that brings us to today's sponsor. Oh, Just like a guy in fuck? RuneScape what? looking to what trim your armor, there is all- Wait, well, no, he's got an ads now. He's got ads in his YouTube videos now. Holy shit, bro. What the fuck happened? He's popped off. He's popped off too hard, boy. He's made it. He's made it now. He's got ads in his YouTube. That's what you do when you've made it. Okay, so you, you get the ads in the YouTube. Holy shit. While I've been fairly safe, this game is actually about farming, which means that Typically, it means my build is fairly slow. So when I'm doing the map device, which is essentially nightmare dungeons in this game, and I you guys have fucking gaslit him. Wait, all these fucking bozos have gaslit his ass straight up. Like who? Why? Why is everyone gaslighting D Darth Micro? I'm trying to say he's like ZDPS and he's slow as fuck. Compared to what? Compared to what? Like he's on a six link shield crush with a replica dream feather and a brass dome. That shit's gonna be upwards of, I mean, I'm assuming he's gonna have like at least 800k DPS plus, which is a lot. That's a lot. Uh, but they fucking, Chad has goddamn gas out of anything, he's fucking ZDPS. And I'm running these maps over and over and over again. My build is very slow for that. But the cool thing about the game is no matter kind of what build you have, there is something that works. So I ran into the situation where I built a tanky slow character like I'm explaining. But there happens to be one of the game modes actually works totally fine for that. You see, the version of the game what? mode I like is called the Oblighted Maps or Tower Yo. Defense Maps. Now, let's say I wanted to Bye. run one to show you. Bly is like number one, one of the top mechanics. And they, and they had one of the best changes. To be fair, they seem to make some more changes to Blight. But the, this is the best Blight's ever been. Let's be honest. This is the best Blight's ever been. This exact patch is the best Blight's ever been. Especially in maps. What that actually looks like. Now, in order to actually do that, I'm going to need one of the maps. Now, if I'm a solo self find character, which is sort of like an Iron Man from RuneScape, then what I would need to do is find the map solo, myself. But solo self find. Oh, he's so cute, isn't he, dude? Solo self find. I have chaos orbs here, which are basically the equivalent of the currency in the game, like your gold type of currency. Oh, this is what most people use to trade. And I could find and buy one because trading is a part of this game. This is the official website. They have their own trading uh, ability on here. I could go to maps. I could say, yes, I want a blighted map. I want it to be a tier 16. I can click search and I can find a map instantly. Here's blighted dunes, five chaos orbs. I will buy that one, for instance. Now it's going to tell me that, okay, you've whispered the guy. It automatically he, he more than one, bro. He's got like, he's got like many. You should buy all of them. Sends out that message. I just click direct whisper and it sends you're a message. You're just spamming him, bro. It's the same guy. What the, you're spamming him. 
Yes. Message to the guys I'm clicking on, and the first person to send me an invite means I can go trade He's with the them. the same guy. The person receives my message and sends me an invite. I head on over to teleport to their hideout, which is oh, sort of... This guy, he's a toxic trader, bro. Dude, he waited like one second, and then he spammed like... <laughs> you don't... Okay, that's bad etiquette. Okay. That is bad etiquette. Chat, if you're buying an item, okay, you need to press... You, if it's the same guy for starters, don't spam me. Press once and then say, yo, I'd like to buy like five. Okay, now, he probably didn't realize that because he's recording a YouTube video. But still, even if you're doing it like one guy, uh, you should just whis you whisper him and you wait. I think, what, 15 seconds. That's 15 seconds waiting. And then if you waited 15 seconds, then you go to the next guy. Because pe people like leave their maps. People pause their maps to invite you, right? People do that. Three seconds max? Oh my god. Oh my god. Like their main player base, oh, their main player house, whatever you want to call it. He sends me a trade request. There, I got the exact number of uh, dollars, basically, oh that he wants for this thing. The chaos Sorry. orbs is the currency. I plop it in. He trades me over the item. And there we go. Now I have the item I wanted. So the reason I want to explain trading in this game is because it is a crucial part of what makes the game feel good. In games like these, we see... Disagree, disagree, hard disagree, but, you know, it's subjective, so fair enough. Leaving loot for your character feels very good, but, but... There's more to it than just receiving good loot in games. When I take this... I think, I think trading... Like, trading is cool and all. And don't get me wrong. Like, one of the best ways to play the games... Game, playing games is with your friends. And when you can give items and trade items between your friends, that's fucking awesome. I think... Uh, honestly, though, I objectively uh, enjoy playing the game when I cannot trade than when I can. Because when I can trade... It opens up infinite possibilities and I can do, there's no limitations what I can do. And it's like, well, I can just get everything. There's no real challenge. It's like, okay, well, why would I do this other mechanic when I, I sh the best thing I should do is what it's going to be in this gold to then farm that out. And then um, once I've got that, you know, well, not gold, you know, got that currency, I'm then going to go and buy those items. So what I mean by that is, in SSF, I'm going to be forced to go do, okay, if I want a Zabiqua Jewel, I have to do Legion. If I want an old quality gem, I've got to do Heist. If I want a, uh, you know, a Cluster Jewel, I have to do Delirium. And you know, I'm basically forced to do all these different end games, which basically means that I get more replayability and more variety in what I'm doing. Whereas on Trade League, you're just going to do whatever's going to make you the most money, the most, the fastest. Whether or not that's just literally spamming bladder maps the entire time, or um, what you know, doing the deducing MF trash, that's what you're going to end up doing. Which I feel like it's just a more unfun way to play the game. On top of that, uh, having lots of constraints can be fun. Straight up. Now, depending on what kind of build you want to play and what, how you want to play the game, if you want to play it casually on the weekend, then for sure, Trade League. Uh, if you want to play some build that requires ultra niche, like niche uniques and stuff that you can only get via trading, then for sure, play Trade. Um, you know, ultimately, the game is balanced around Trade, and they only put, you know, often new lead mechanics are entirely neutered and nerfed because of the fact that Trade exists. Uh, so it makes sense, like, hey, Trade's a good thing. But ultimately, I get that he likes Trade. It's subjective, though. It's subjective. Chris Wilson himself says the best way to play the game is solo self and hardcore. Do you think Chris Wilson's full of shit? Map and I go farm this map, which I'll do in a moment. He's not. He's not. C Dubs is based. Okay. To show you what it looks like. When I do that, I have opportunities for the map to drop me things that I could sell on the trade system in order to make more of the currency back to go buy other items. So instead of me just looking for exactly the drop I want, and if I don't get it, everything else feels bad, every item I get is an accumulation towards my go. It's fragments effectively of the character I'm, or the item I'm trying to farm because everything is more or less currency. And with a live trade system that's fairly easy to use and fairly fast, it makes the grind not feel depressing like in diablo 4 if you don't get the tempest roar helmet you just feel bad all day but if all of the items and uniques you were getting you could trade on the market to somebody else and get gold for instance or some kind of currency something that was worth something then you know i'm not wasting my time to farm these maps every single time you get a drop it is the potential to be like a dopamine exciting moment because any of them could have something that helps you towards your goal. This is an important part that I didn't realize earlier on in my review. I didn't realize- I agree with this, but there's obviously massive cons to this. this he's describing the, as what I've just outlined. I agree, for sure. Like, for example, 
finding a divine and trade league feels better than finding a divine and solar cell found. No doubt. No doubt. It definitely does. Because you get that hit of like, oh shit, this is currency that I can buy. But then at the same time, finding a niche unique that's like really big, um, you know, but not that rare, not that expensive. Uh, and trade league is like uh, not, a, not a big deal. So for example, I am Fortress, uh, a chess piece. Uh, you can buy it on trade league for like 10C, 5C. To get that on SSF would be fucking mind-blowing, insane, crazy shit. You'd be pogging out, cr going nuts. Trade League, they're just... It's not a meta build, so oh, it's worth nothing. Oh, oh, come on. This is hard, dude, to leech. It's hard to leech, guys. It's hard to leech. All right. What I'm saying is it goes both ways. I'm saying it goes both ways. It, you, it normalizes everything. So then... And, and ultimately, I feel like the overall amount of dopamine you're going to get, I think it's lower. I, I mean, that's why, you know, which is why I'm incentivized. I, I get better, more feel-good chemicals in my brain release playing SSF than I do overall with trade. That's just a reality because there's more moments like that where it's like this crazy shit, uh, you know, versus trade. It's like, okay, you hear a tank, it goes, oh, shit, that's worth money, which I can sell to get the thing that I want. How much trading adds as an additional layer to the game and makes you feel like you're not wasting your time almost no matter what you're doing. But back to my original point about how even a bad build like mine can find some uses. So this is the blighted maps. Now I'm just going to run this kind of standard instead of making it absolutely crazy because I want to be able to talk and focus on this. But these maps right here are effectively tower defense types of maps. All the damage didn't even put oils on it, bro. is going to come from my towers down, and this man. is sort of a strategic type of game. So what I'll do instead of actually fighting the monsters myself is these are the lanes and they're gonna add more and more lanes as time goes on. But what I can do is I can build these turrets. For instance, this is an empowering one and this one is gonna slow them down and this one is going to stun them. I do a combo, so now they get stunned and slowed. So they get locked for a while. This one will be my damage, for instance, with a meteorite strike. And so now I have this area. Chad told him that. This not a bar. Do you reckon he just figured this? Do you reckon he figured out to not upgrade his towers? What do you, what do you remember, boys? I reckon, I reckon he got backseated there. Or when they walk through Fucking here, they're going to get... Backseating and he's ruining the game for everyone, dude. Stunned, slowed, as well as damaged. Now I got to worry about the other areas they could potentially be coming from, okay? This is the port on which they spawn from, so I'm just going to be doing sort of the same thing around the map. This is the base I am defending. If they make it here, they have... This could be so much more. I'm going to be honest. Like, this could be... like, And we know that because balloons exists. Okay, a game that can play on your phone and it's fucking amazing as well as you can play it on your computer. Okay, that, do you know where GGG is up, uh, located? Literally next door to Bloons. They can literally contract one of the Bloons guys to revamp the blight mechanic. Like, and they could make it so fucking cracked. They could make it so cracked with very minimal changes. Like, with just the POE game engine, just as long as they can design their own towers and their own units and get the ability to upgrade them, you could just make this so fucking good. I really, really, really want to see Blight 2. I would love to see Blight 2. And then they, they, and it's like, they literally just hire some of the TD guys across the road to just put that shit in. Have 20 Get, call Rohan, call Rohan. 20 units of damage that I can receive, and then GG, I lost the map, and I'm not going to be getting my rewards. Now, as I kill things, I'm going to be getting more and more currency that I can actually use to upgrade my towers. You know, you're going to know this. I still do damage to the minions. You can still fight these minions yourself if you want. However, the majority of your damage later on in the map is going to come strictly from your turrets. You can also modify your maps, make them more difficult. You can even make them easier if you choose to do that. So you're not just kind of locked in to having it only one way. This is a totally normal one, so I didn't make it easier, I didn't make it harder. And it can get crazier and crazier as, as you get going with these maps. I mean, they're going to start sending bosses, and you can see they're already kind of making it through my turrets. And this mode is where I've spent the majority of my time don't, don't in the lose, game bro. so far. Don't lose. Because one, it works really well with my build, considering that my build basically has zero damage. I can rely on the turrets to farm the things. You don't have and zero two, damage. because it's actually just extremely enjoyable. I, I actually really like tower defense games outside of this game. I actually just like tower defense games. Nice. So when I figured out there was tower defense in it, it seemed to be a pretty nice fit for me. And the cool thing was, is because of the currency system I'm talking about, here's a boss, for instance, that's sneaking on through. I didn't see this other lane. Um, you because of the way the currency Focus system works, him. I can continue to use uh, these maps and play the way I want and continually make money over and over and over again uh, and work towards my goals, which is how I got basically what I have in the game, which is the brass dome, gladiator plate, you know, these unique items, etc., which kind of work for my build of being just as tanky as possible. 
And then you can see here, I failed to defend it here. L, so they go, they L, blow up the pump L. and I don't get my rewards. Now let me show you another one. So now I've used the trade system to buy another one. If I go to the stash here, I can- He's doing the classic Diablo Andy mistake, by the way, Chet, where it's, it's what it is, is you just like, you have a proclivity uh, towards uh, unique items. Cause you're like, unique is cool. Unique is fun. Unique is nice. So then he's got, he's got his, he, you know, don't get me wrong. I'm down for the dream feather. I'm down for the brass dome. Uh, I'm down for the shield, but yeah, nah, for this, 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 get rid of this, get rid of this. Uh, uh, these boots, I mean, he's on softcore, maybe he's on softcore, maybe these boots, I guess. But like, yeah, he's, he, it's, it's one of these things where, you know, t t spamming unique is not always a good thing. I can show you, I got the blighted map. Now what I'm going to do is improve the quality of this map to make it drop more loot. I'm going to make it a rare map in order to uh, continually improve the loot quality. And then I'm going to go to this here. And these are the oils you get from the map. And I can modify the map continually by adding reduced cost of building and upgrading turrets. So now the map's a little bit easier, but I'm also going to be getting more loot. It's a little bit harder in some ways, but it's a little bit easier in building the towers, which will also give me more loot. So now I'll show this to you again. Basically, I'm walking you through the process of how I learned to do these tower defense maps because originally I was just getting wasted every single time. And then you learn the nuance of you modify the maps to fit exactly to what your build needs. I basically have no DPS to speak of in my build. So I need to be able to have the towers be cheap and do as much damage as possible. The fucking blight review right here, boys. We're going to get that POE review. We're going to fucking blight review. Log in. So that the towers can carry the map in order for me to farm the highest tier of the map to get the most loot possible, even with my dog shit build. So now Stop. we're gonna put the map Stop in. Stop gaslighting DM. They're thinking his build's dog shit and slow and all this. When his build is literally fine, it's it's, it's been real. I hate that he keeps referring to it like this. Like his build. Like what's this? What's this POE? Uh, path of oh, building. What's this POE? Let's see here. I want to load this bitch in. There we go, bro. What the fuck? One wave over two overlapping waves. I mean, bro, bro. He's got frenzies, endurances, dude. Dude, bro, this guy is chilling, mate. He's chilling. He's so chilling. Max effect of pride. Bro, what the fuck? He's been gaslit. He has been gaslit by his chat and to think in his builds like slow and dog shit when actually it's literally fine. Look at level 91, a mil DPS. That's heaps of damage. What is, what is the name right now? And wait, that's that flask as well, by the way. This is that flask. With this flask on, he's going to be even higher. It's got a granite, dude. He needs a basalt, bro. He needs a basalt. Oh my god. Why is he using magnate as well? What the hell's going on there? I mean, he can significantly improve his character so easily as well. I mean, only 100k armor, bro. Holy shit. I mean, this thing is like, a, what the fuck? Bro, he's going melee damage with nearby to intimidate when you have rage. Full and pale wheel, bro. The full and pale wheel. Okay, attack, overwhelm. Um, this is certainly a unique um tree. It's it's certainly a unique tree. It's, it's, it's certainly it's, I like how he gets the full I like how he just gets the full thing on all of them, bro. Like I mean, it's a tr it's, it's it's you know, it's yeah. But ultimately, its character's not that bad. Like a mil DPS is fucking solid that's fucking solid bro and again and we're going to run it and this time because we've modified it there are going to be more monsters to fight so it'll be a little bit more like his character has more damage than my level 98 guy well okay he would until uh, and then but if i got my gem obviously my character would be like fucking cracked bro like if i got my old quote gem it would have been cracked but yeah, like my guy without the gym, I mean, shit. Difficult, but that's also going to be a lot easier because the cost of the turrets themselves have been reduced. I have used oils, which you get from doing the maps in order to reduce how much the turrets cost. So now I can put them out a lot sooner, more turrets, more DPS, which will be totally fine. But the game's also gonna become more complicated because now there are more monsters to end up fighting. So I'm gonna have to be building a lot quicker this time than I did last time if I want to survive. The reason I'm showing you this and I'm spending so much time on the tower defense is I want you to understand my thought process when I was playing the game of going from like, wow, my character kind of sucks because I don't know what I'm doing to finding a way that it fit not only what my character's build that I kind of had, 
what it ended up working for me, but also a style of game that I actually enjoyed. From what I hear, this isn't the most popular style of game. Like not a ton of people actually even like this game mode. It seems like I'm one of kind of the odd people that actually like the tower defense stuff. However, for me, it was exactly what I wanted to do. It's basically one of the only things I really wanted to do outside of bossing. I just happened to love this game mode. And you can see it's getting more and more complicated. We've got lanes everywhere at this Oof. point. I actually Oof. even died while standing there trying to upgrade stuff. Yeah, that's dog shit. That's stupid. Like, what just happened to him right there? Bro, tell, I'm telling you, bro, that, that the blight monsters should not do fucking anywhere near as much damage as they deal. Like, the fact of the matter is, I don't think they should do any. I think you, I, I think it should be like a purist, like actual TD. Now, obviously, people are going to disagree with that. They should have a fuck. I mean, really, we should have an opt in purist mode where you don't do any damage, only your towers do damage, and you just get to be a builder. Because that's, in my opinion, what it should be. Because it's the, the blind gameplay is never fun. Either you're trivializing or choosing it using some fucking bonkers build, like where your FK and Spexus just kill everything and you just stand at the fucking middle, or you're playing it like an actual TD, and then your character's just randomly getting one shot all the time when you're trying to fucking build towers. That's just not good. And then you really gotta kind of pay attention because they're all over the place, and basically what I'm trying to do is just keep them as slow as I can, so that it's way I can so have bad. time to upgrade everything, and I'm doing that by locking them out with freeze and slam turrets over and over again. And then once I've got all my turrets up, and they're kind of handling everything, I can just kind of go back to my base and relax and know that, okay, I can play some RuneScape or something for a few minutes, and then they're gonna defeat the map for me. You don't actually have to like tower defense to understand what I'm saying. Well, what I've realized through this process of finding my own niche area in Path of Exile, this is why there are so many Path of Exile, uh, what's the word for it, fanatics. People will go down a road and find exactly their path with their style of character, their thematics of the character, their own cosmetics with the character that you can get where you, I like, I quite like the look of my character. I think he looks like some kind of like Celestri Celestrio neither something their own style of gameplay their own types of mats uh, maps which they modify for their own way and then they're saving up to get exactly the items they want etc so people find their own area within the community and within the game that makes them feel like they're focusing on and doing exactly the type of thing they want to do i feel that i see i get what he's saying it's like you can make your own end game like you could one guy could be a fucking guy who just sits in his base trading all day and just farms currency Another guy could be a fucking guy who just loves Sanctum and runs Sanctums all day. Another guy could be a fucking blight, fucking TD god. You can have another guy who sits there, he just like, he just does boss boss services and just kills bosses all day. You can have an SSF Andy who likes just fucking being a complete god game of beast, making sick fucking off meta builds, popping off, killing crazy shit, going rank one, you're doing all that shit, okay? You know what I'm saying? So now we just finished the- There's many ways to enjoy the game, which is like, that's awesome. It's not like, okay, whereas how many ways can you enjoy? Okay, now compare that, right? Compare that of, you know, maybe, let's say there's like, in PoE, there's probably like at least, I want to say a minimum 10 distinct different ways of playing the game that are massively different, right? That At minimum 10. I'm, I'm being so generous right now. And you compare it to a game like Diablo 4, how different can you play D4? Really, how different can you play it? Like, there's, it's like, oh, no, there's a train track. The devs are putting you on that track. Yeah, you could farm. I guess you could do one guy who just likes to do just out, only outdoor content, and a guy likes to farm dungeons. You know, there you go. That's that's what you've. <laughs> that's what you <laughs> you got. You got like oh, you could have a PVP guy. You could have a PVP guy who likes to PVP. To be fair, there's PVP as well. To be clear, all right. Do they do bossing services? Maybe they do bossing services as well. Maybe it's bossing. But the fact of the matter is, it's like so narrow and so forced on a track whereas this game has so many different ways you can play it and so much depth the fact that he's able to make like a review about part of exile but he's basically just doing a blight review and blight is literally one out of uh fucking 20 different mechanics that exist uh in the game is like it's kind of nuts right the very last boss on this wave here that's getting stun locked to oblivion and just like that it is completed and now we have an actual like a lot of rewards. There's going to be a lot of things I can pick up. All of these are chests and loot. And each time I open up one of these, I know I have a chance to get something that's actually worth some money that I can sell. For instance, this right here is worth money. That's worth money. That is definitely worth money. They're, these are all adding towards the, con they're contributing towards me being able to pick up my next big upgrade. So every time I'm doing this, it doesn't feel tank, like right? I'm just sitting tank. here waiting for the one time no whammies hit 
all of these are contributing and all of these are going to have some kind of value towards me giving whatever my next goal is. So, but you diminish the value of the smaller things that are more common, but still, you know, rare enough that they will be satisfying upgrades to your character because you're in trade league. Okay, to be clear, here, that's a trade off. It's a trade. It's a trade off to you. It is. It's a trade off. It's a trade off. Even if while I'm looting this, I don't get exactly the best item in the game, or I don't get exactly the item I'm looking for. I know if I do enough of these, and I enjoy doing them anyway because there's enough variety right. in the game, I can kind of pick whatever it is I really like doing. And I'm picking the tower defense thing where I can play multiple games at once. I can open up RuneScape and Woodcut or something while I'm doing this as well. Eventually, by the end of the day, I'm going to have a significant increase of wealth, which I will put towards getting my next big upgrade. So combined, what does that actually mean? It means I'm making meaningful progress on a character that is unique, fairly unique to me and what I actually wanted to build and the theme I wanted to build it in the gameplay mode that I enjoy playing in a community that actually has trade and interaction. If you are not doing so, the solo self find thing, you can actually, you know. Bro, Darth Micro needs to try solo self find. He needs to, to try solo self find. Okay, cause he's not gonna, he's not gonna, I think he's overvaluing trade right now. He's overvaluing trade hard as fuck, and he needs to try solo self find. For real. Okay, and he needs to also try solo self find hardcore. Because he might get the fucking itch. He might get the itch and then realize how fucking good it is. Okay, because that's what happens. You get that itch, dude. You get that once you get to that, 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 the rush of almost dying, the rush of succeeding, the rush of, you know, okay, the point where you die and you lose your character. And you you fall into a you know wallowing pit of depression, and you know spiraling down to an infinite nothingness where nothing in your life matters anymore. Literally, you just you kind of you just lie in your bed awake, staring at the fucking uh, ceiling. Okay, you know you need to have you need to have that. Okay, you need to try that because trust me, it's fucking good feeling. I mean, the highs are high and the lows are low. Trade with the community, etc. While looking the way I want to look. The game has a lot going for it that allows you to find your own path, which is what I think feels unique about this ARPG. For me, ARPGs tend to be the thing where it's you find a build, you copy paste, and yes, that is something you sure that sort of should do in Path of Exile. You kind nope. of do need a You know, you shouldn't do that. You shouldn't do that. You should do that if that's what you want to do, but you shouldn't do that. It shouldn't be a thing you should do. That's again, chat is gaslighting him. Chat's gaslighting him. I hate how he's getting gaslit so hard by his chat, which is just sad. It's sad. That saying is builds shit. His character is slow. He's doing zero damage. He, you should be following a guide. All this stuff. No, no, no. You should do what you want to do. The builds, and I'm I'm falling prey to not having used the build. There's things that are hard for me now, like trying to build a, a fight the shaper boss. I just don't have the DPS for it. I suck, and people are telling me to change my build, and I'm stubbornly. You have the DPS for it. You've got the DPS for it. Okay, that is a skill issue. You just gotta practice pounding my head against it trying to be the liver in any way and it seems very obvious i just basically need a better build and to retweak my no yeah you don't need a better build you don't need a better build again you could do it you could do it on that character you could absolutely do it on that character absolutely you could do it on that character bro without without my you could do it you can do shaper on a build that has 50k dps okay let me tell you because i've done it um but that being said there's a lot you can do kind of in your own way and I don't actually think after playing this game as far as I did that the drop off on bricking your character is as bad as I thought. I think my character was, uh, you know, helped out by the fact I had chat sitting there kind of giving me advice, etc. So some people may get punished harder, but there are multiple styles of game modes like the Blight game mode that you can find that kind of regardless of how you ended up fucking up your character, you can still find a way to progress and you can use the currency you get to buy basically refund orbs that then you can use to refund your your skill tree and you can rebuild your character if you need to so it's actually on retrospect not quite as bad as i was originally thinking so all of that to show you some examples of what i've been doing so what do i actually think about the game what is my now impression of the game ever uh, okay. after having played it the game is like don't fuck it up don't don't you don't, don't, don't I, I mean i'm not worried but Okay, you better watch yourself, DM. You better watch yourself. All right, you're about to, you're about to, okay. A solid eight and a half, nine out of 10, in my uh, opinion. It's very good. The only okay. reason I wouldn't give this okay. game like a 10 out of 10 okay. and be ranting and raving about being the best game ever made, etc., is because there is some things, uh, not necessarily in the game, but outside of the game that are required if you really want to go to the pinnacle of the game. And again, you don't really have to push. 
the pin code of the game. I've gotten decently far with only really help from Chad and they tend to argue with each other. So half the time it's not even useful anyway, but I've gotten decently far enough that I feel decently satisfied with my first run of a character uh, while not really following any of these major guides or anything. However, there are a bunch of tools that definitely make your time in the game significantly better. So it does kind of make the barrier, the entry to the ultimate in game fairly high, which is one of the issues. For instance, it is very you don't need to do the you don't need to be doing the ultimate in game as long as you're enjoying it. You've like, bro, you could just literally do just to that Kataba. And if you enjoyed yourself, that's a W. Very difficult to tell what your items are worth when you receive one. If I wanted to know what this item's worth, I would have to download the program called Awaken POE, which then will show you what the but, price is. Hot take chat, but Uber bosses aren't even good. They're not even good. Like they, if you if you're like, I need to kill all the Uber bosses. No, you don't. No, you don't. Literally, the game peaks. The game straight up peaks uh, at just the normal end game bosses, like just killing Exarch, uh, killing Shaper and Uber Elder and stuff like that. It peaks. And then it's still, you know, don't wrong. There's still more shit to aspire to. There's still more things to do. But the, the fact of the matter is that the game in terms of like for what it is and how well the boss is designed and how they feel and everything, it's peaking at the non-Uber. Okay, straight up are of these items you know using sort of the api of the game i'll go in and take a look okay where are these currently being traded with etc that way i can know and you kind of have to do this with most of the items you get if you don't know what you're doing which can take some time there's also this application which is path of building this is a very useful application that will help you immensely with your build effectively what you can do is you can import your build for your characters so I have my level 91 here and I can import my skill tree, my passives, my items, all of that types of things. And I can go back and actually look at the skill tree here. And what it's going to do is it would tell me when I hover over something exactly how much it's going to approve or degrade my build, which is immensely important. So you don't make <laughs> those mistakes like we were talking about earlier. Very useful tool. However, even though I knew it was going to be useful and everybody and their mom was telling me that you need to install this tool, you need to understand it, everyone uses it, and it's how you make your character good, I didn't want to because all I wanted to do was play the game, which I think is a Base. perfectly reasonable it is. way to play the game. You don't need a PAB. You don't need a PAB. Look at my card flicker character. He's popping off. Don't even need the POB. Most people that download the game, they want they when they're just starting the game, they're not into the game so much that they want to download three, four, all these different programs to understand trade values, to understand mm. how to build your character, you know, et cetera, without literally ruining your character for you. A lot of people just don't want to do that because they're trying to play the game from the beginning. So that can be a barrier. I'm not saying it's impossible. And I know the POE people would push back and say, no, it's really useful. No, that it is really useful. But for the people that just download the game, they just want to try a game, trying to get these people to install modifiers, add-ons, as well as these additional programs, which in my opinion are probably badly needed to make sure your in-game experience is enjoyable and to make sure you don't make these mistakes. And What's law? It's nice. It's nice. It's, it's like, okay, spamming like a tree and then realizing you get a regret back and then realizing, oh, fuck, I should have part this way and then regretting that way versus just like, having this tool where you can you can plan the change you're going to make check them double check them and then you can respec it whenever you fuck it up and then you be like all right go and then you can do it in the game it's just a nice way of planning right and then it's also if you're trying to if you're trying to uh if you've got two things and you're like well this is similar that's similar what is the actual better option when there's two very close options and you can figure it out very quickly and the problem is the mistakes you make in the beginning do tend to bite you in the ass later in the game. So the earlier you get these programs, the better your experience will be. These are going to be the barriers to entry in the game, which seems consistent with my original impression of the game, which is that if you can push past the barriers to PoE, the things that make you not interested in the game, and you force yourself through those, then the game continually opens up to you and becomes a better and better game. That is continually how I feel about Path of Exile. True. It's a phenomenal game. It is a extremely deep game that has a ton of content that will fit your play style, your thematics, exactly the type of even game modes you want to play. You can make the character exactly what you want, which is really cool in an ARPG world that makes you typically think, everyone tells you Path of Exile, you have to copy these builds and all that, which you uh, kind of do. But no, you don't! I'm oh, sorry. A, dude, see, I want you to get Darth Microtech's chat and tell him to sh fucking shut the fuck up. To be fair, it's not even just DMs chat. They need to tell the PoE community to shut the fuck up. You don't need PoB. 
You don't need to copy a build. You don't need to do any of that shit. You don't... His build isn't zero damage. He's not slow as fuck. He's not... Okay, no. All the shit that you're telling him is just not... Dude, if I want to make... If I fucking make a character and I'm like, Oh, I'm going to be a two-handed axe guy and I'm going to go bleeds. And you just pick the nodes on the tree that say bleed damage, bleed chance. And you fucking just... You put on a slow hit and get a slimy attack. It doesn't matter. It's Sunder, EQ, whatever the fuck. Your character is going to do damage. It's going to work. It's going to do, like, enough damage. You're going to pop off. Okay, all this need... Uh, dude, it's it's not even... The game's not telling you to do it. It's like, you can just do that, and it'll work. You don't need POB to, to figure out these minor upgrades and things. You don't need to do... It, the, I don't know where this mentality came in or why it's a thing, but it's just just not required and i think it's like because this they, they say like oh you need to kill the uber in game you need to do all this stuff no you don't if you're like bro if your character's getting into yellow maps and you're popping off and you're getting you're getting the red maps and you if you're able to like fight shaper and try to be you can almost beat him that's awesome and then imagine how feeling how good it will feel to beat him it should feel amazing it shouldn't be like oh wow that's kind of shit though because i should be killing the uber shaper no dude not at all not at all but the game's not really copy-paste. I would actually argue a lot of people's experiences are very different from other people. It's both because of the game mode they choose to play, like solo self found versus just standard game mode, you know, like the Iron Man type of style. What kind of drops they got along the way. You know, maybe they got more currency than another person. What little modifiers in their build they decide to change. A lot of people might use a build guide, but I don't think everyone necessarily always does it in the same way. So... It actually might be a little bit more of unique experience per person than some of the other ARPGs in which there's not a lot of modifiers to change, so there's not a lot of opportunity to have your character sort of identify itself differently out of the pack. To put it shortly, Path of Exile requires a lot for you to ultimately get ultimate satisfaction out of the game. But because it requires a lot, that is a symptom of the fact that Path of Exile has a lot going on. And that's what you want in a game, like I've said before. You want a lot going on because you want to spend a lot of time in the game. Very rarely do people pick up an MMO style game like this and think, I want this game to end as soon as possible. Path of Exile does not do that. It offers something for people that want to continually play the game. And I think I will come back to Path of Exile and play it effectively every season. Today I will be live streaming oh, Starfield as I am extremely oh. excited to play. Speaking of games that you want to like just fucking end as soon as possible, dude. <laughs> Starfield, you can find the link to that down below. <laughs> and that's my feelings on Path of Exile. It's a great game with a great community True. that I will probably True. be playing every season launch from now on. D4 bad. It makes sense that you're going to make switch into PoE every season, bro. It makes sense. I, and it's a fucking great game. And he's got so much, bro. He's got so much. The fact that he's just been spamming bladder maps only. And he really hasn't, like, got into it hardcore or whatever. I mean, bro, he's got so much shit to enjoy. No, 100%. Chat, you don't need POB. If you fucking like... Soul rent, okay, and you just pick a fucking occultist. You pick the chaos damage node, the wither node, and you pick the fucking curse. Okay, you pick the chaos nodes basically, and then you go on the tree and you type chaos, and you click all the chaos nodes, and you pick the wither nodes. Guess what? Put that shit on a six link, and you complete the entire game up to. Okay, now I'm not saying Ubers, right? Because Ubers, you shouldn't be looking that. That should not be a part of the scope. That is some extra shit they added in for broken meta shit, okay? The best parts of the game, you can engage with. You can go to red maps, you can do red maps, you can do all the end game bosses, you can farm out all the shit. That works, and you can have a fucking amazing time, bro. You can have an amazing time. That's literally the best part of the game. Like, in terms of peak content in PoE, the fact of the matter is, the best shit is the beginning when you start a character and you just first get to maps and you're just doing your lab and your build's starting to come online. Then, you know, you're progressing and you hit red maps and you start, like, popping off. And then you start killing those first endgame bosses. Like, that's when, when it, that's when it's the best, in my opinion, that is the best part of the game. Now, this is obviously, this is subjective, but for me, I just love that. I, dude, I love the feeling of a... I mean, why do you think Mathel does it over and over again? Why do you think Mathel keeps making new characters? It's because it's like, oh, you have an idea for a build. You have a concept. You're like, this will be cool. I'm going to use this item with this fucking ability, and I'm going to use that, and it's going to be a lot of synergy. This should be cool. And then he tries it out, and he just fucking logs in, does a real rough POB sometimes, whatever, and he just goes. And it's just fun as fuck. And that's, and that's the best part of PoE, is having an idea for a build, having an idea for an archetype, and just logging in and playing you shouldn't be doing the shit where oh i need to follow a build guide i have to play a build that does 50 million dps 
the truth, which is being literally min maxed and being played like 500 times and it's entirely solved and everything's subbed up. I'm just copying and pasting from my guide. No, you you are deleting the best parts of Path of Exile, in my opinion, to do that. And you're skipping past the fun part. You're trivializing all the actual like good bosses, which are like Shaper without all the fucking 500 beams. You're skipping past all these fun things. Like, look at my Shaper this season. That shit was crazy. That shit was straight up harder than my Uber Shaper that I did the last league. And that's it's just because it's relativity. It's relativity. And and this is what I'm trying to say. You This whole fucking gaslighting thing, when I see Darth Micro getting gaslit by his fucking chat saying he needs to follow a build guide, his build shit, you need to be doing 50 million DPS, and you need to be fucking like obliterating Uber bosses from the game to truly enjoy the game. It is the most brain dead and toxic logic I've ever seen in my fucking life, okay? And I don't like it, all right? And the community, the PoE community who are doing that shit, you need to stop. You need to stop. Because he is. God damn, damn. God damn. God, 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 God damn.